What's up, beautiful people? It is Dr. Tanya Lambert here at Lambert University, and I'm super grateful to share some new awesome content with you. So as you all know, I'm a women's health coach. I founded Lambert University, which is a health coaching company for women who would like to balance their hormones naturally to heal from uterine fibroids. So I did a poll on my Instagram account a few days ago, and what I found out is that many of you ladies out there want to learn about how you can use food to help you on your healing journey from fibroids. Now, I know, of course, I don't just have ladies watching this channel, but there are also men watching as well. But I do want to let you all know I'm grateful to both the men and the women for supporting my content. But the content on my page is dedicated to the ladies. So without further ado, here's what we're going to be talking about today. And that is drum roll. Drrr, 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 cruciferous veggies. Yeah. What are cruciferous veggies, you ask? Well, here are some examples. Kale, broccoli, arugula, bok choy, rutabagas, radishes, cauliflower, cabbage, and the list goes on and on. Cruciferous vegetables can be found on nearly every single continent on the planet. Dr. Tanya, broccoli, kale, those foods have no flavor. How come all the healthy things don't taste so nice? What about oxtail, rice and peas, stew? You can't do better than that? Ah! Hey, sis, slow down, slow down. I understand. I was where you were and hated cruciferous vegetables. And I really just wanted to stick with my oxtail, rice and peas, and stews. But guess what? You can actually make broccoli, kale, and all those other cruciferous vegetables taste great. And I'm going to be sharing with you how you can do that in the next video. But before we do that, I want to share with you a fun fact. Did you know that cruciferous vegetables come from the mustard family? They are actually referred to as cruciferous because they have four petals that form the shape of a cross. Also, I want to share with you the nutritional benefits of cruciferous vegetables. Number one, they are a great source of folate or vitamin B9. Folate helps you to build up your red blood cells, which is great if you have anemia and even if you don't because it helps you to maintain healthy red blood cells. Folate is also excellent for the development of the nervous system of the baby being carried by a pregnant woman. Cruciferous vegetables are also a great source of vitamin K. Vitamin K is excellent if you are suffering from heavy bleeding because it helps to clot the blood or slow down the bleeding. Also, cruciferous vegetables are a great source of vitamins A and C, potent antioxidants that help in the shrinkage of fibroid tumors and they also help you to reduce your risk of certain cancers. Now, one of the greatest benefits of cruciferous vegetables, and you don't want to miss this, drum roll, boom, D-I-M. It is a great source of diendoyl methane. So diendoyl methane is a compound that is going to support the detox systems of your liver, which is going to support normal estrogen levels and help you to get rid of excess estrogen. Also, the high fiber content in the cruciferous vegetables is going to help you to poop. And making regular bowel movements is a game changer in helping you to release excess estrogen through your bowel movements. So sis, when it comes to cruciferous vegetables, there are so many benefits. You must get it into your diet. Well, some of you might be thinking, well, doc, I heard that eating too much cruciferous vegetables can lower my thyroid function. Well, that information actually comes from animal studies and not from humans. In fact, the only way for cruciferous vegetables to lower your thyroid function is if you're not getting enough iodine in your diet. And many of us live in the developed world where we tend to get a lot of iodine from table salt. Now, table salt is not the best source of iodine. It's best you get it from fresh produce like strawberries, green beans, whole grains, and even sea vegetables like nori, dulse, and even Irish sea moss. If you have hypothyroidism, 
the best way to consume cruciferous vegetables is to lightly steam them first. Now, the reason why a lot of health practitioners are concerned about the negative impact that eating cruciferous vegetables may have on thyroid function is due to the goitrogens in the cruciferous vegetables. However, most of the goitrogens are inactivated when you steam or cook your cruciferous vegetables, but you don't want to overcook them or over steam them. You just need to steam them lightly and you can enjoy them. If you have hypothyroidism, it's best to limit yourself to one cup of steamed or cooked cruciferous vegetables each day. And you don't have to have cruciferous vegetables every day. You can actually alternate days and make sure you combine your cruciferous vegetables with other vegetables like dandelion greens, romaine lettuce. You can have it with even herbs like fresh basil or even parsley or cilantro. So you want to make sure you're having a variety of greens on your plate. Now, sis, here's the moment that all of you have been waiting for, and that is, how do I get these cruciferous vegetables into my diet, you might be thinking. Well, it's actually very simple. Now, to help you on your healing journey from fibroids, what you want to do is have one serving of cruciferous vegetables each day. Now, how do you get that in? Well, one serving of cruciferous vegetables can be done one of three ways. The first way is to have two cups of raw leafy cruciferous vegetables. The raw leafy cruciferous vegetables include broccoli, kale, and cabbage. You can also steam these vegetables and a cup of steamed or cooked cruciferous vegetables, for example, broccoli and kale, would still give you that one serving in the day. But I still encourage that you get the raw vegetables in because they have more nutrients in them. Another example of a serving of cruciferous vegetables for the day would be a cup of the non-leafy cruciferous vegetables. The non-leafy ones include the radishes and the rutabagas. And those can be cooked or steamed and one cup of those per day would be fine. And if you have hypothyroidism, you can skip the day and have a cup of the steamed cruciferous vegetables every other day. But don't forget to include other greens in your diet like dandelion greens, green leaf lettuce, romaine lettuce, and even the herbs like cilantro, parsley, and fresh basil. And of course, make sure you're supplementing with iodine. Speak with your licensed nutritionist or healthcare provider to help you determine how much iodine is right for you. All right, sis. So in the next video, I'm going to share with you two fantastic, superlicious, delicious, cruciferous vegetable recipes that you are going to love and enjoy and your family is going to love it too because I'm going to show you easy simple ways to just get those veggies in so that it is tasty to your palate. Now before we end this video I have a message to share with you. Hey sis did you know that Jesus Christ not only wants you to be divinely healed but also for you to experience divine health. In Isaiah 53 verse 3, it says, For he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, you are healed. So claim the healing power of Jesus Christ over your womb and your entire being. Because he wants you to live abundantly so that you can experience his will for your life and be a blessing to many. If you like this content, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. And let me know in the comments below what you would like to learn more about to help you on your healing journey from fibroids. Take care of yourselves and God bless.